Hey kids, welcome to Unit 3, Lesson 5, Enhanced For Loops, Exercise Number 4. Well, the states class has an instance variable for a 1D array of states. In states.java, the method getStates returns a string containing each element in the names array. In the method getStates, we're going to refractor the for loop to use an enhanced for loop to traverse the states array. And as always, curious about where this data comes from? Check it out right there, kids. Well, let's take a look at the code in my console. Looks like we have a string array based states. We have California, Texas, New York, Florida, and Illinois. We're instantiating a new object, my states. It's from the states class. It is passing along this array, fave states. Well, then we're printing off the my states object get states method. Let's look at states. We have one private array, it's called names. One constructor, states, has one parameter. We have our get method here, get states. We're creating a string result, it is empty. We have our for loop here, and this looks like the loop I've seen for this entire unit. Creating an index, setting it to zero, long as our index is less than the names array length, we're going to get results, which is blank. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add each element names to that result. Got a little space so the numbers don't squish. At the end, we're gonna return the entire result. What we wanna do is refactor this for enhanced for loop. First thing, let's run, make sure it works before we start messing with it. Let's hit run. We are getting our states printed off from our my console. Well, let's comment this out. Remember, control question mark, mass comments. Oh, looks like we're commenting out a little too much. We only want to comment out our for loop. We can come down here, hit control question mark, return that. Let's write our enhanced for loop. We still need our for keyword, still have our parentheses, still have our curly cues. What do we need in our parentheses? Think how a for loop works. We're looking through each element at a particular index. An enhanced for loop, we're looking through all elements we don't care about the index. For loop, we had to create an index to look through. Here, we're going to create a variable to store the information at each index. It's important to remember the variable we're going to create has to be the same type as the array we're looking through. Our array we're looking through is names, which are strings, so we'll need a string variable. We're looking through states. We'll keep it easy and call our variable state. Then we need a colon, another space, and the array we're looking through. And we're looking through names. And all this is saying, we're going to create a variable state at every index of names. We still have to do something to it, just like our for loop. This time, results is adding to whatever names index we're at. Well, names is now the state variable. So we're going to return state this time. Means result, same plus equal, is going to equal state plus our same quotes, because we don't want to squish the numbers, and a semicolon. Again, our variable state is just replacing the index we're at and storing each element there. So our result is storing whatever names index we're at and then printing it off. Clean up our code a little. Go to our end of class. Code looks pretty good. When I hit run, I should get the same thing printed off. Well, let's hit run and see kids. And we got our five states to print off again. Looks like our enhanced for loop worked pretty well. Key takeaways from this lesson, kids. 
is how an enhanced for loop works. I do recommend that you go watch code.org's video on enhanced for loops. It's linked down in the description. It's a great video, and it's also where I got this graphic you see on screen. And what is our enhanced for loop doing? It's looking through each element in an array all the way through. In our case, we're creating a new variable state, and it's going to become each element in the array names as we go through the loop. And in our for loop, we just added the names at that index to our result. This time it's the same thing, except the names at the index is now our variable state. Finally, remember why we use a, an enhanced for loop. It's shorthand for we know we have to look through an entire array. Hopefully kids, this video helped you understand enhanced for loops and how to write them. As always, if you have any questions, come see me. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next video. See you later, kids. Bye. Bye.